Yeah. Don't ask me anything about production or <laughs> the music scene. <laughs> I know about babies <laughs> and Waiheke. Is Optimus Grime then, is there, a, is there sort of a persona behind that or is there an ideal behind it or is it a, was it a name that you just needed to um, represent I, you or? Yeah, I was, I needed a name. Yeah. And so I said to Penny, I'm like, I need a name. And so we came up with, I'm shit coming up with names. Um, I've come up with so many whack names and thought, used it for a month or so. And go, oh, no, that's <laughs> so then she goes, what about, um, and Transformers had come out at that time. She goes, what about Optimus Grime? And I'm like, Optimus Grime? <laughs> It's so cheesy. <laughs> and then I'm like, but it's, <laughs> you know, it's got a ring to it and a bit of cheese helps promote. Yeah. Um, you know, things that kind of do well always have an element of cheese to it. And I'll, I'm totally aware of that. Mm. Also, the so, grind relates to the dubstep. And yeah. Some totally. Well. It's not actually, it's not Optimus Dubstep. <laughs> uh, so it's kind of like, you know, close but not too close. Um, so for those who know about the scene, it's a bit of a pun as well. Yeah, totally. It's totally. ironic. Uh, totally. <laughs> so, but that's, but that's, it was that relationship that made me go, oh, that's a bit you know, cheesy, you know? Yeah. But, um, so then I just slapped it on, um, it was when I made that immortal tune actually, and, and um, I needed to send it. That's right. I needed to send it to Ollie, <laughs> and I sent it sent it to them soon as well. Yep. Um, and I was I needed to put a name on it, and so I was like, okay, I send it tomorrow. So I went to bed like I need a name. She goes Optimus Grime, and I'm like, it's done. <laughs> but then the next day I hadn't had anything, so I put it on, there. <laughs> and then I sent it, and then um, I saw Jono from that from soon. Yeah. And I saw him that weekend, and he's like. Oh, I got that tune you sent me. Yeah, cool tune. I love the name though. <laughs> <laughs> but the name's awesome. I'm like, oh, really? So, oh. got to keep that name. <laughs> and I'm like, okay. <laughs> and then um, Ollie Baseweight was the same, and a few other people I spoke to. They're like, oh. even um, yesterday, I got something on my Facebook page. Some dude going, oh my god, why didn't I think of that name? <laughs> and so, you know, so I used that, and um, I came up with a little. You know, which is tacky as well, but it works as the little Optimus Grime head logo thing with the OG in yeah. the face. And um, so I designed that, and knowing that it was pretty tacky, but still, you need, I think, having a visual to your music. Yeah. good. Um, and it's, you know, saying that I like it now and it, mm. and it works. Yeah. Um, and yeah, so I'm, um, and uh, I think. Six months later, I did a little um, few gigs around New Zealand, and um, I went to Dunedin and got a really good crowd down there. Mm. And um, I'd prior to that been to Dunedin and played, and we got eight people, me and Billy, and that was doing the Royal TV thing. And so then after doing the Optimus Grime thing for six months and going there, and, you know, smashing it, I was like. I think there's something that's in the name. Gonna, that's gonna, yeah. <laughs> and then someone said to me down there, they were like, yeah, I need to change my name because your one's blowing up. <laughs> so I'm like, yeah. So I think, I think it's the name that kind of catches on a lot more than the music. So I go to gigs and um, so many people come up to me and they're like, ah, you know, I haven't, listened, I haven't heard your album, <laughs> but I love your but mixes, love you know? Uh, yeah, and I love your name. So, um... I don't know. So the moral of the story is listen to your wife. Sometimes. <laughs> so what was the switch that made you go, right, dubstep? Um, Have you heard... It was, mm, it was when there? the tunes stopped progressing as quickly as they were. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, for a while there in drum and bass, it was like everything that I imagined I could do with a beat, but actually couldn't because my production skills weren't great. Someone was doing it. And so I'd go out to a club and hear a tune. Like I'd, have, I'd think of a beat one one day and fuck yeah, I wish I could do that. And then I'd go out to a club and hear it. 
and then I'll be like on the dance floor going nutty going yeah that's what I wanted to do with my tune but I can't um, and then you know so it seemed that every week I went like every time I went to a gig there was always at least one tune that I'd come home with and go fuck that tune and that's why I went to the gigs was to hear that one tune mm. and then I just wasn't really getting that anymore um, still good tunes coming out and I was you know I was like Still, um, at that point, I was gigging, doing like two or three John Bass gigs a week, and I think that was a big part of it as well. I was, I was going out to all these gigs so much more. Like before that, it was, I could go to a gig when I could afford it, and being on Waiheke, it was thirty bucks for the boat fare, mm. and when you've got no money, thirty bucks is, could be it might as well be a million bucks, and so you know I wasn't going to that many gigs, but then I started doing the Royal TV thing and. DJing heaps of gigs and then had to keep my finger on the pulse with all the tunes that are coming out. And so I was, you know, and, and being a Waiheke, you can't just go to a set and go home. You have to go out yeah. and stay there till six o'clock because the first three home was at seven in the morning. So I'd hear a shitload of tunes. <laughs> and so, yeah, so I was just hearing so much of it that it was like, it just wasn't exciting me anymore. Mm. I mean, I was, yeah. I got to a point where it felt like I was, um, you know, I was playing tunes and I was kind of like, oh, yeah, this is fat, but it wasn't really, you know. I there's a time there when I was people would kind of give me shit about um, the way I mixed because it would be like someone said to me, "Fuck man, I look like you were gonna eat that mixer," because <laughs> like I'd just be there with like <laughs> mouth just open wide and just like you know. I'd, it must have looked like a total dick. <laughs> but um, you know how people hump the mixer? Something is yeah. not, not I was like eating the mixer. <laughs> and um, yeah, so there was that time which oh, shit was just exciting me. And then, yeah. and then I got to a point where I was, yeah, probably, I mean, not just seeing drum and bass, not saying that it's not good. It was just wasn't exciting me at that point anymore because mm. of the product, because I was hearing so much of it. And so... Um, yeah, I heard this um, thing dubstep. I've been kind of keeping my um, ear out for a while with I mean, it. If someone takes a listen to your album, it's not just dubstep. I mean, you've got a few like, more laid back, still, yeah. still quite sort of percussive rhythmical in the background. Yeah. So you're always thinking that whenever you're focusing on your production, you're always going to have that element where you're just focusing on the small sort of higher frequency percussions. That's where you're going to stick yeah. with the, well, not is necessarily it? the dubstep sound itself, but the type of style of music that allows you to focus yeah on it's it was it's more the tempo that i like mm -hmm. um i like djing the heavier stuff because it's got i mean the stuff that i play when i dj out has definitely got drum and bass massive drum and bass influence yeah same sense same ki uh, kick same snares um but yeah the stuff that i make is just that tempo that i like because you can fit so much stuff in but saying that I have been um, focusing a bit more on the making dance floor tunes since the album came out. Mm -hmm.